Hi, Kevin Coop here, and this is FaceTime with the Content Guy. So, there's a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about uh, this week. Um, to start with, let's talk about Brussels sprouts. Now, I have been on the record here on Morning News Beat that I just don't like Brussels sprouts. Don't like them, can't, pretty much can't stand them. Now, i got to tell you, the list of foods that I feel that way about is not very long. Um, let's see, what would it include? Beets, for example. Uh, I don't like beets. And part of the reason I'm convinced is, you know, my mother, as I was growing up, used to serve those really ugly, disgusting red beets that came out of a can, and man, it seemed like she gave those to us all the time at dinner. And, ah, I just swore I'd never have a beet again, and uh, that pretty much has held true. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've been willing to try things from time to time. Not that long ago, I had white beets, and they were, they were pretty good, but uh, they're not going to be on my list anytime soon. Let's see. Oh, I have a real visceral reaction to egg salad and liver, especially liverwurst. I just, I mean, liverwurst, I can remember just hating the smell of it when my mother would make it for her lunch. And uh, egg salad, I have no idea what this is about, but, you know, I get physically ill when I'm even in the, in the room with egg salad. I will probably need years of therapy to find out. I really don't care about finding out that much, but that's probably what it would take. And then there's finally, uh, there, you know, what can I tell you? I just don't like Brussels sprouts. I really don't know why. I just don't like them. I don't even remember having them much as a kid. Uh, I just don't like Brussels sprouts. But, now, earlier this week, I went to an Italian restaurant in the city uh, called Il Buco, and it was a business dinner. And one of the things on the menu was risotto with shaved Brussels sprouts. Now, as much as I dislike Brussels sprouts, I love risotto. I will have risotto almost any time I see it on the menu because I just love it. So I was really torn. And I, I said to the waiter, I said, you know, is this any good? And he goes, oh, these are really good. So I decided, leap of faith. I tried them. I loved them. They were fantastic. Now, of course, one of the guys at the table said, well, this is yeah, it's Brussels sprouts. Yeah, but they're mixing it with arborio rice, onions, wine, and butter. <laughs> How could it not taste good? He had a point there. But the thing was, these, these were really, really good, and I'm really glad I tried them because it was a fabulous meal. Um, you know, and it, it, it was instructive about how good cooking can really make the difference in a meal and totally turn somebody around. Um, I was also kind of thrilled to find out that, you know, I'm capable of, of a little personal growth, even at my advanced age. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was... Um, the fact that while I was in the city this week, I actually went to Italy. You know, Italy is that shrine. It's this Taj Mahal that is dedicated to all things culinary and Italian. And, and Italy, if you've never been there, is really worth seeing. Uh, they're actually building one in Chicago. For those of you who are going to the Food Marketing Institute show next June, there's an Italy, and I really recommend that you go. But one of the things I saw when I was in Italy was really kind of interesting. It was this little book, and it's called The Little Book of Pasta Tips. And... Um, I, you know, it's just 50 simple little tips, and nothing really mind-blowing, mind but I, I thought it was good. You know, this was good. There are a couple of things in here that I was thought it was worth sticking in the kitchen for anybody who's making pasta, and um, I thought it was really cool because it was, frankly, a, a great impulse purchase, right? I mean, I mean, people should have these at their front end um, in supermarkets instead of some of the crap that they sell, and by crap, I mean these magazines that seem to make a living out of chronicling all things Kardashian. So anyway, so I picked it up, and uh, $4.95, a really good deal. But what was interesting about it, I thought, was before I bought it, just because I was curious, not because the $4.95 was going to break me, but before I bought it, I decided, I'm curious if Amazon sells it. And guess what? They don't. And boy, is that a great lesson, right? That if you want to differentiate yourself in the mind of the consumer, if you want to compete with the big guys, what you got to do is you got to offer products and services that the big guy doesn't carry doesn't carry, can't carry, doesn't really matter. You know, sometimes it's a little thing, sometimes it's a big thing, but if you're going to actually sell stuff and compete in that kind of environment, you've got to find ways to differentiate yourself, and that's selling things the other guy doesn't have or can't have. Anyway, those are the things that are on my mind this Thursday morning, and as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.